This is Dr. David coming to you from Montreal, Canada, and this is the Retina Hot Mic Case Series from iCarePD, where the PD stands for Professional Development. In today's case, I'm going to show you a patient that I've been treating with an anti-VEGF injection for uh, quite some time now. This is a 79-year-old female and what you can note here in this image from back in July of 2017 that there was some retinal thickening, intraretinal fluid, subretinal fluid and after a series of anti-VEGF injections at once a month, July, August, September, you can see that the the fluid comes down. Just as an FYL, FYI, all these little bottom undulations are, are drusen. So that that's pretty standard. Uh, there's a lot we could talk about there, but I think the other eye is a bit more interesting. When I flip over to the right eye, what you'll notice is that this patient has an epiretinal membrane. If we just concentrate back in January of 2018, and I scroll through the images, if you're just looking here in this January 2018 section, you'll see that there's an overlying epiretinal membrane. There's a lot of retinal thickening. You can still see your drusen down below. But what you don't see is a substantial amount of intraretinal fluid. Now, for those of you that were cheating and looking ahead to the right side of the screen as I was scrolling, you're going to see that when the patient came in on March 4th of 2019, the story was quite different. She had been noticing a slight decrease in vision in her right eye for a couple of weeks. And what you can see as you look at the image is you still see that epiretinal membrane, but, but look at the difference now. There's your epiretinal membrane, and now you've got not only retinal thickening, but you've got the start of early intraretinal fluid. You can note that by the alteration in the pixel color. So these are uh, a little bit darker black here as opposed to that uniform gray. What you've also got is subretinal fluid. So it's interesting that, um, and there you've got a little bit of a, a PED, a pigment epithelial detachment as well. So this will really push you over to a diagnosis of uh, exudative AMD or wet macular degeneration. And I did go on to give her an anti-VEGF injection in this eye on this day. But the point is that the conversion and the ability to find that conversion is very important because you're definitely going to have at times these patients that have these larger epiretinal membranes that cause some degree of retinal thickening, but you need to be able to note when things are actually worsening to a point where they have choroidal neovascularization and need anti-VEGF injections. Well, I think that's uh, all pretty interesting. And this is Dr. David signing off, and I am always learning.